Hey everybody, it's Lon Sybin, and we've got a little action camera from Sony. This is a little wearable, kind of like a GoPro, but in a very different form factor. Uh, and this is it here. We'll kind of step through all the hardware first. So you have a, a wide angle lens. There's actually two different uh, widths that you can uh, apply to it, and I'll show you how that works in a minute. Uh, you've got onboard stereo sound on the front here. Um, it has a, I, I stuck this on here, it was in the manual. Uh, there is Wi-Fi that allows you to connect it to uh, your tablet device so that you can control it, uh, get a viewfinder, and also uh, change modes and some other things. And uh, you have to uh, get, keep this password. And it might freak you out a little bit that, that the only one you've got is on this little sticker here, but there is a way to connect to the camera with the USB cable and uh, pull it out of the system directly. But I just decided to stick it on here so I can find it again. Uh, on the back, there is the big record button, which is actually very easy to hit. In fact, uh, I had put it in my bag and I must have hit the record button and it blew out the battery and the memory. <laughs> so I had to uh, reset everything earlier this evening. So uh, just uh, make sure that you uh, slide this little lock button over there so you can't accidentally hit the record button until you're ready. So uh, just a little, little tip there. Uh, on the front, you've got a little screen that tells you what mode the camera is in uh, and also how much recording time you have left on the card. Uh, you have uh, some buttons here to control the menu system. So we can uh, go back to uh, the menu here. Let me just show you some of the options you have. Um, you have a photo mode, and you can uh, enter that just by hitting uh, this. Now, if I hit the record button while I'm in photo mode, it'll take, uh, it'll take pictures. And as you can see, I've got um, about uh, 1,300 photos uh, left on the, uh, the hopper right now. Um, and actually, what's neat is that when you do take the picture, uh, it will... Um, fire it back to your tablet if it's connected too, which is cool. So to put it on the card and it'll also fire back to the tablet. Uh, we can go next here. It has interval shooting, so you can do a couple of frames of photo like every five seconds or something like that, which is pretty nice. Uh, you have a setup screen and in here you can kind of go into some of the nitty gritty. So I have it set right now to uh, HQ, which is 1080 at 30 frames per second. There's actually a mode beyond HQ, which is PS. I'm not sure what PS stands for, but uh, it'll shoot 60 frames at 1080, which is uh, nice if you want to get uh, a lot of solid motion. And you could always drop that into your software later and slow it down. Um, it also has uh, other modes like VGA, so really uh, low resolution, but you can store a lot more on your card. Uh, it also has um, 120 frames per second slow-mo, uh, which is very similar to uh, what you'd see on the iPhone now, that same frame rate, so you can do uh, super slow-mo videos. The one thing that I didn't like about the slow-mo function is that it will output a slow-motion video, which I guess normally you'd say, oh, that's exactly what you're looking for. However, on the iPhone, what it does is it'll give me a video at 120 frames per second, and then I can slow it down myself in software. So that's my preference, but uh, this thing will do it for you. It also has a uh, 720, uh, 60 frames per second slow-mo as well. Uh, there is a hit on image quality when you do these slow-mo modes. As you can see here, it's very grainy. Uh, I was in a low light environment to begin with and it got worse. So uh, I would want to do, I would do this out in good light and have some good exposure there when you do that. So we'll set it back to uh, 30p here. And uh, I think we hit the record button to just lock that in. Um, so those are your movie settings. And then that's pretty much it. So um, that's kind of, kind of the basic settings there. And then on the bottom here, we have um, some uh, ports. So you've got uh, a, a, a microphone in port, which is always a great thing to have. I really like the fact that this camera has that because I like to look for that in many cameras. Uh, you have a multifunction port. I think this works with the... Uh, uh, this thing, which is a, um, a it's an add-on you can get, and this is a uh, little camcorder enclosure where you get an LCD screen and you can kind of use it like a camcorder like this guy's doing right here. Um, I'm going to review this in a separate video, so look for that one. This is the AKA LU1, and we'll uh, cover that one in depth uh, there when we get to that. Um, we have an HDMI out with a little mini HDMI connector. Uh, and it's a standard connector, but it is a mini connector right there. Whoops, I'm just trying to hold the door open there. And then you have USB, which is what you use to charge the device uh, and also will allow you to transfer files off of it. You can move it off the memory card as well directly just by taking the card out if you wish as well. So that's there. Then on the back here where the recording thing is, you can pop this open and we can get at, let me, uh, Sometimes it's hard to get it open, uh, but you can get out the battery uh, as well as the memory card. It uses um, uh, the micro SD format, but it also uses Sony's whatever it is, um, Sony's micro M2 format as well. So it uses both formats, but I think the uh, SD cards are probably all you need. Um, I'm using a class 4 8 gigabyte card in here, and it's working just fine. So that is how it works. So let's take a look at it, though, and see what kind of image quality we can get. I shot some video around my house. It has been so rainy and dreary around here. I haven't had good light at all. So uh, you're not going to see probably the best uh, 
uh, image conditions. Maybe I'll do a follow-up when I get some sun around here in Connecticut. But um, you can see a photo here or a video here I shot of my daughter playing in her little play thing, uh, which is pretty cool. She's always got a great smile. Uh, and here's a, uh, another one I shot. Uh, I have a little uh, uh, room under my front porch. <laughs> it's a little, like a little bomb shelter, I guess. But I just kind of ran up and down just to test the, uh, the steady shot capability. It's one of the things that they're really pumping in this device is that uh, it has steady shot capabilities and uh, can make your life easier when you're uh, looking to, uh, you know, if, you, if you're out and skiing or something, you don't want to have a very shaky thing. It does a pretty nice job of stabilizing the image. Now, the camera has a built-in Wi-Fi access point that will interface with Android and iOS devices, and you get actually all the functionality we just reviewed in here, uh, you can get access to from the app, which is really kind of handy. I have a wire plugged in just because I'm able to uh, actually have the camera running through my video system, which is kind of a neat thing to be able to do. So I'm going to show you uh, just some of the modes that uh, you can set here and we'll see them change in real time. So I'm going to pull up now uh, the iPad app here running and I'll pull it out of the way when uh, I have something interesting to show you. So um, the first thing is, is that you can set the mode of the camera and by the way the reason why it's a little bit jumpy is that my video system runs at a slightly different frame rate than the camera outputs so uh, don't worry about it when you're actually recording it's a lot smoother. You don't have uh, the jumpiness that you're going to see here while we go through this. Now the app is a little jumpy because it's transmitting over Wi-Fi, so um, it's not going to give you perfect uh, image quality, but at least give you enough to know what the camera is looking at. So uh, we can set the mode. As you saw before, we had a choice between movie, interval, and photo. We're going to leave it on movie. Uh, we can go now into settings though as well, and we can change a couple things. So um, steady shot is the uh, basically a sta the stabilizer that's built into the camera, which keeps it uh, smooth while you're running around and moving around. Uh, recording mode is what we were looking at before. So we have it in HQ, which is that 1080p mode, but we can easily just switch it uh, to that faster frame rate. And you can see uh, it, it immediately changed the uh, frame rate we're looking at on, on screen here, which is kind of cool. So uh, you can do all of that uh, right within the app here. I'm just going to put it back at the high Q mode for a second there. Um, but the other thing that's really neat is that you can change the angle setting uh, here as well. So I'm just going to pull the iPad out of the way. I'm going to hit the 170. So let me just pull this out of here so you can see the difference. So we're going to switch to 170. Uh, which gives you a much wider angle. So there's two different angle modes in the camera. You can see how distorted things get when you get up close to things, but um, it's kind of neat to be able just to sit here on the app. Uh, let me pull the app back up here now. Uh, it's neat to be able to sit on the app and just kind of switch it just instantly like that and get uh, the two different uh, angle modes available right there from the app, which is really cool. Now, the other thing you can do is that when you find the shot that you like, you can hit the record button here and the camera will start recording. Now the frame rate on the iPad will take a hit when that's happening. I would imagine this the little processor in this thing is uh, not able to keep up with all the things we're asking it to do right now, but uh, recording wise it's still uh, going to do pretty well. Uh, you hit the stop button there and it will save it. Uh, when you take pictures on the back of the device, uh, if you hit the uh, record button while you're taking in photo mode, um, it will actually run the photos back to the tablet over the Wi-Fi, which is kind of cool too. Now there are a couple other accessories available as well. So I'm going to pop up uh, what you get with the camera when you first buy it and then show you a few other things that you can also look at with it. And I just hit the wrong button. So let's go to camera two, um, which is now this one here. So we may as well use this camera to demonstrate what, what you get in the box. So you get uh, with it, you get these things. You get these little mounts here. They have stickers on the back. Uh, so you can put it on a helmet or something like that. Uh, so you get one of these. This one's kind of curved, you know, so for if you had a helmet or something that might have a little curve to it, it'll stick to that. Uh, this one's a little bit flatter, so you can put it on a car. Or, well, I don't know if you want to put it on a car, but you can put it on something on a more flat surface. Um, it has this little adapter here, uh, which is what slides into these, uh, these mounts. And the only disappointment I have is that uh, there's no tripod mount uh, built into the camera itself. So when you get it, uh, you have to put it inside of this guy here, and this is a waterproof housing uh, that is, I think it's certified, they tell you on the front here, it's certified to uh, 16 feet or 5 meters. So you're not going to get too deep with this thing, but if you're a casual diver, I guess you'll do pretty well. Um, it doesn't feel like it has all that much ceiling to it, so I could see why they might say that. Um, but it does, you know, it does, I did throw it in a, in a little jar of water and it kept the uh, water out. So it does do that at least. So I'm going to put the camera in here and show you some other stuff. So we're going to take a quick break. All right, we're going to slide the camera in here and then you just uh, kind of seal it up. It's a little hard sometimes to get this thing on because you have to get to like position it correctly, but we'll get that um, latched in here. And when we do, uh, we'll then have the ability to uh, plug it into all of these devices. So if you wanted to use these uh, these two little uh, mounts here, what you would do is just screw this onto the bottom 
uh, and then run it through there and attach it. Now there's some other things that you can get with, uh, you know, for extra, extra uh, purchases here. Um, you have like a little uh, mount here that you can attach to your helmet so you can get a little bit more height, maybe adjust it. Um, so you have like a little adjustable helmet mount here, which is an accessory you can add on to it. Uh, they also have a strap mount here so you can, again, this is an optional thing, but uh, you can strap it onto your head or your helmet uh, and you screw the camera into the tripod hole here. And there's also a wrist strap you can get too. So if you're skiing or something like that, you can uh, throw that uh, in your bag and put it on your wrist and, and go, uh, go skiing with it. So I'm a little disappointed that you have to use this case in order to hook it up to any of these things. And I guess, you know, you want to keep the lens clear and protect it, but um, you know, I, I just feel like this thing's going to get gunked up after a while. There is a uh, anti-fog uh, uh, accessory, also optional, that you can get to kind of wipe it down and prevent it from fogging up on you. So, um, and you know, it does provide some good protection, so perhaps that's probably why you'd want to use it. But it would, be nice, it would have been nicer if there was a, a tripod mount on the bottom. I think the uh, LCD screen, which we'll review in a minute uh, on the other video, will have, uh, will have that ability, though. So you have some different options there. So, now, one thing I wasn't impressed with was the packaging. Uh, this camera is encased in really hard plastic and it's screwed into the packaging. You actually had to get a screwdriver out uh, to get the camera separated from its box and I thought that was a little over the top. So overall there's not much to complain about with this camera. It's really, you know, it's well thought out. I think it has a lot of nice shooting modes. I like the fact that uh, the app is, is, at least from my experience, has been very functional in how you can uh, interact with the camera and get very instant uh, changes implemented very quickly and easily on it. Um, the, uh, the only thing I'm not crazy about is the fact that they don't have a tripod mount on the camera itself. You have to have it inside of this protective case for uh, you to mount it on a tripod. And, you know, mainly just because I think this plastic case is going to get scuffed up over time. And I guess the same could be said of the lens, but I don't know. I just would have liked to have had that uh, mounting ability without putting it in this case. Um, there's certainly a lot of accessories available. You have to buy those separately. So it kind of comes with just the bare bones, which are these uh, two little mounts. So if you want to do something, uh, you know, with the helmet strap or, oops, or have the adjustable helmet thing or the wrist strap, you're going to have to buy all that separately. So I could see, you know, quite a, an investment in getting everything in there. Um, it is a little too easy to hit the record button on the back. So uh, you want to make sure that you learn where that hold button lock is and uh, get it locked in there. But, you know, overall, it's a pretty good camera. The video quality is decent. And uh, I think it's, uh, it's a nice wide angle view that you can get with it and it's certainly uh, you know on par price wise with other uh, competing products in the marketplace and maybe the form factor on this one might work better than it would with a GoPro or something like that so overall if you're in the market it's certainly one to consider this is Lon Sybin thanks for watching